FS Elite at Flight Sim Expo 2024 is proudly brought to you by Pimax. Check out their Pimax Crystal Light right now for some of the best VR headsets available today. Good afternoon, how's everyone doing? It's my mic on. <laughs> one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Yes, there we are, perfect. All right, please help me welcome to the stage Magnus from Navigraph. Thank you, let's have a seat. Magnus, probably a lot of people don't know. We, we saw each other not too long ago in FS Weekend. I FS believe. Weekend, that's right. Uh, Lelystad. Yes, outside of uh, Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Yes, yes. Um, Back then you had a pretty cool feature, at least for me personally, but I think a lot of other people as well. Um, the annotations for charts. Mm -hmm. um, can, you tell, can you tell a little bit about the feedback that you've seen since then? Yes, people are drawing funny things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the feedback that we have been getting is that this was a, a long-awaited feature. It's actually backed by popular demand because... It because... Are you okay? Yep. Okay. Uh, a bit of feedback there. Um, <laughs> I should be talking louder? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. I'll speak up. <clears throat> this uh, feature is backed by popular demand. It was in a previous version of Navigraph many, many years ago. Um, and it, at that time, we had two different code bases, one for Android and another one for uh, iOS and I think um, a third one for PC. And it was just uh, too hard to maintain it all. So then when we rewrote the code base and we released the next version of charts, then um, annotations didn't make it. And then we had to basically reinvent this, but then we were in a different position because uh, now much of this is uh, shared between the different devices. So that means that if you're inputting something on an iPad, it will appear on your PC if you have one and also in the in-game panel inside of the simulator. So it's all now much more advanced and synchronized. And you can actually input from the simulator on the in-game panel and will show up on your iPad. And that level of synchronization we didn't have previously. So that's why it took us a little time to get it back into charts again. And you were asking about the feedback? Well, um, people tend to prefer to use the stylus because it's a more natural way of interacting. You can use your thumb or your finger to maybe outline the taxi clearance that you have gotten. Uh, but when it comes down to jotting down, um, you know, those things that you want to remember, um, there's a feature coming soon, which is the scratch pad, which is more suited for this. Um, otherwise, we have the ge ge geometric primitives. You can create circles and squares, and you can uh, scribble whatever you want here. And uh, I guess that's, that's, uh, it's up to uh, everyone to use it in their own way. But generally, the feedback has been positive. That's very good to hear. And you heard it here first, the scratch pad is coming at yes. some point? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. The scratch pad is coming. It's, a natural, it's a natural continuation of this. Yes. For sure, yes. Oh, I might add here as well that there's um, annotation. It's not only annotation, it's also highlighting. So you can highlight stuff in your um, operational site plan as well, because you can write on that as well, in case you didn't know. All right, very good. Um, and then if we go back just a couple of weeks, I think it is, you released a pretty major expansion to Simbri Flight Planner mm -hmm. with the um, um, performance calculations. That's well, what has the reception been to that so far? It, it, uh, I think people were a little bit surprised. Um, there was a lot of happy reactions to this. Um, and I can give you a little bit of background perhaps on how we were reasoning around this. So uh, Navigraph is a company that provides charts, navigation data, and flight planning. And uh, we see ourselves a little bit like um, a gas station in the sense that we sell gas, we sell data. And the other add-on developers around here, we see them as car manufacturers. So they're producing cars. And you guys, you drive those cars and you come into us and you fuel your cars with gas. So we're, we're a gas station. 
Now, if we were to produce cars ourselves, we would be in competition with the other add-ons developers. So we didn't want to do that. Now, seeing that PFPX and Topcat hasn't been maintained for a while, and no one took it upon themselves to, to build um, a performance calculator, we figured that if this space is not going to be filled anytime soon, uh, let's do it so that we have a performance calculator at least. So that's how it came about. Very exciting to hear. And obviously the big news from this weekend are the uh, traffic sectors and ATC overlays. Yes. This is another technical challenge actually. Uh, <clears throat> we are collecting uh, position of uh, aircraft, uh, not only from Navigraph pilots who use SimLink, but also from VATSIM and IBAO, and there's other networks to come as well. Typically, the update rate here is somewhere between 10, um, sorry, 0 0.1 hertz, so uh, every tenth second. Sometimes you get it every fifth second, but in collaboration with these networks, we're down to a one second update rate. Now, um, there's sometimes as many as 10,000 pilots active at the same time um, on the Navigraph. Uh, let's not call it a network because it isn't really. But we have a, a lot of Navigraph pilots flying at the same time and also a lot of VATSIM pilots flying at the same time. Adding to this IBAO, we sometimes have upwards of 10,000 aircraft visible at the same time. So there was also some challenge in managing the performance, because if you're running Navigraph charts on your flight simulator computer at the same time, you don't want to bog down the computer with all that information. So um, there was uh, some challenges in handling that data stream and to cull it down or to downsample it into manageable data sizes. Um, all of this you don't necessarily have to know about. Uh, all I can tell you is that there is a Navigraph, when you view it as a globe, it's quite mesmerizing to see how these aircraft are moving across uh, the Atlantic, for instance, at certain moments in time. When you have these big events, we've been running this in shadow mode for over a year, actually. So we've been, we've been watching you guys. Uh, we they know where we fly, they know what we do. <laughs> we just wanted to make sure that when we release a product that it um, that is mature and that it will keep up to your guys' expectations. So you mentioned the um, update frequency and the performance as some technical challenges, perhaps. Um, have there been other technical challenges trying, like implementing this feature? Well, um, I think it went pretty smoothly because um, our team, uh, headed by Stephen O'Connell, our chief technical officer and also the co-founder of, of Navigraph, um, he, have reached, he has reached out to um, Batsim and IBAO and gotten good support in, in implementing this. Um, and um, I think the challenges that lie ahead now is more about incorporating everything that you can do with this in a sensible way. And that's why we're not releasing today. We're just showing it to you guys so you can provide feedback on how we should develop this further. And I'll give you some suggestions. Um, there's been things that we're considering. For instance, uh, if you click on an airplane, maybe you want to know what the flight plan of that airplane is so you know where it's going for instance you might even want to know what type of arrival and approach that pilot is considering so that you know which airspace that is going to be uh, slightly congested maybe in the near future also you want to maybe click an airplane to see who's who's flying it we're not talking a social media profile here but some sort of a public profile where you can present yourself so that's saying, hey, my name is Magnus. I have seven years of experience in, in aviation, for instance, so that when an air traffic controller clicks that aircraft, they know if I'm going to need to tend particularly to this person, if they're going to be a, a headache or if they're going to be a breeze, basically. Uh, other things that we've been considering is to promote um, friendliness in the community, uh, a good tone and that everyone is being nice. Uh, maybe we could consider some sort of like an Uber rating. So this controller, he was nice to me. And this pilot, he behaved nicely and seemed to know what he was doing. So maybe a little bit of scorekeeping here to make sure that um, we're all being our best selves on, on, the, on those networks. FSLE at Flight Sim Expo 2024 is proudly brought to you by Simbit Worlds A Pilot's Life Chapter 2. Check it out now on Sim Market and also on Contrail.
think that's certainly a very um, um, noble like like direction. Um, and I think it might also certainly help with like assessing a user's certain like skills, see if they might understand certain procedures or see if they might need a little bit more help somewhere perhaps. But, but we appreciate also that people want to stay private. The, the Symlink connection wasn't originally intended to become a network. So um, we will make sure that there's options there to stay. Um, if you want to fly alone and you don't want to interact with anyone else, if you don't even want to be visible, we're going to make sure that you can opt for this as well, of course. Um, but um, the possibilities here are endless. And unfortunately, the user interface is finite. So um, we're listening now here to see what you guys have to suggest. One thing that is coming, which I might mention, is um, a vertical profile, so that you can see um, how you depart and how you arrive, and the terrain that you're passing over. Uh, there's been requests for uh, visualizing turbulence in there as well, and potentially also airspace. Funny that you mentioned that, because we were listening to the announcement that you did yesterday on stage, and I think it was one of the guys in, on our team was immediately like, Oh, I wonder if the vertical profile, and then literally five minutes later, you were like, yeah, this is also something that we're looking into. We, 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 in a bleeding edge version of Navigraph Charts, which we're not displaying here, but, but that we have at the, at the office, we have this diagram already. Mm -hmm. So you can see uh, how the altitude changes and how the airspeed changes. Um, and we also have some mock-ups about how this would work uh, over terrain. We did a couple of test flights over Norway, which has a pretty interesting topography. Um, we're not quite ready to show it, but uh, the work is ongoing there. Hopefully soon then. Yep. Um, with Navigraph and Charts and also um, uh, Simbrief uh, ever expanding its, its feature set and offering more to the users, which generally is a very nice thing, how do you make sure that the tool doesn't become too complex for people? Like, let's say a newcomer to Flight Simulator mm. wants to get into using Charts for their flights, but maybe finds all the buttons and all the options a little bit intimidating for them. Right. Yeah, we're, we're reaching, reach, uh, reaching a point here where we need to think more carefully about this. It's, it's great to meet you guys here in, in places like this because we s understand who you are. So I'm talking to this gentleman over here, for instance, and he tells me his background story. And I'm talking to someone else and I start to understand him. So anecdotally, I have some personas in mind when we're designing these uh, products. And up until so far, the, the people that, uh, that has been the most vocal are the advanced users. So we build functions that are pretty advanced, but we have to appreciate also that there are people that are just beginning. And what can we say more about those beginners? Well, they're not all teenagers. They are, uh, some people come to this hobby uh, a little bit later in life. Maybe you were not able to maintain your, um, your certificate because, uh, because of, for medical reasons, for instance, this is how you got into flight simulation. So our team has started thinking about personas. And I'm going to test a couple of these. I think they're a good laugh because probably some of you will recognize yourself. So we have, for instance, Peter the pilot. So Peter the pilot is someone who already knows how to fly and they could then transfer their knowledge without any effort to the simulator. And they probably know what is available and just need to look for it in the interfaces. It's got to be there somewhere. So they're not giving up until they found what they're looking for. And we have Simon the Simmer. He's about equally a skilled operator in the simulator, but he doesn't necessarily know everything about aviation, right? We have a third persona in mind. Uh, we call him, and this is a Swedish name because we're a Swedish company, we call him Ulle the Overwhelmed, okay? <laughs> so there's someone that wants to achieve something, and there's a lot of data out there, there's a lot of tutorials, but he just doesn't seem to be able to structure himself in, in order to learn this coherently. Uh, and where do I find all the resources, and, and how do I not become overwhelmed. And then we have the fourth persona that we're considering, and that's Yannick the youngster. So <clears throat> these are the guys that have infinite amount of energy, and they won't just let go until they found the answer to this. And, and they are manipulating the interfaces almost like in a muscular memory, uh, rather than having the actual knowledge about what's happening. So these are the four personas that we're currently keeping in mind when we're designing our services. And this is going to result in at the end of the year, something called Navigraph Academy. So Navigraph Academy is a way for you to learn not only how to operate the simulator, but also how to fly an aircraft. So we are going to model um, the curriculum of a PPL 
and do that alongside with how to use our products at every stage in this curriculum. Um, we have, for this purpose, um, two flight instructors, uh, one with a, a European school and one with an American school. We have our content team that is preparing this and the end result is going to be... Are you guys listening? I feel like I'm talking and talking. Yeah, <laughs> by all means, I think everyone's very captivated by what you're telling. And these all right, personas. just give me two seconds more and I'll, I'll wrap this up. Um, this is going to be a production that's going to end up uh, available for free on YouTube. And you can watch this with a very low level of engagement. You can watch this almost as a TV series from the sofa. So you can put your feet up and you can just watch it. But if you wanted to sit up straight and you wanted to participate, there will also be tests that you can take in order to test your knowledge, whether you absorb what was being told in these TV series or this uh, course material of ours. And if you wanted to take it one step further, then you sign up at Navigraph to participate in this Navigraph Academy. And then we will have you take a couple of uh, test flights and using Simlink in this traffic network that we're now designed, we will be able to test whether or not you know how to control the aircraft. This is typically modeling the PPL curriculum. So at the end, we will reward you with a, um, a virtual PPL. And that will then go on to your profile. So when someone clicks your airplane in this um, traffic interface of ours, they will see whether or not you completed this class and whether or not you know how to fly the simulator and whether or not you know how to operate your 172 classes. There. Sounds very interesting. Um, so you already mentioned a little bit, like you work in a very community-driven way in that sense, mm -hmm. uh, inviting people to over at your booth, uh, also in the products you make, to give feedback, uh, help enhance the product. Maybe that's a nice segue into, um, so Navigraph is a very community-driven uh, company. Right? Absolutely, yes. So you guys take um, feedback from users and like, I'm sure because you mentioned this on stage a couple of times with the, the, the overlays that you announced yesterday, but also I remember from FS Weekend with the uh, chart annotations, there were mm -hmm. very highly requested features. So how, how do you go about like, you know, people walking up to your booth or just walking up to you or whatever, um, coming with ideas or leaving them on the website. How does that work its way eventually into Navigraph or into Simbrief? Okay, interesting. Yes, uh, the way we do this is, um, believe it or not, many of your guys' requests are typically the same. So we're very quite aware of many of these requests. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't give them to us. You should certainly, but at in the booth, um, out of 10 requests, uh, maybe one or two are um, somewhat unique and then we put them into a, a Slack channel or, or we, have a, we have a chat software that we use to stay in touch in, in the company. And in that Slack channel we have our CTO reading through what's coming up after a session like this. So after a day like this we made maybe a couple of hundred product demos and there's a couple of nuggets of gold that come out of those demos and those we collect in, in, in the Slack channel. And then we take them home to our office and, and, and we discuss them. What happens then is uh, typically a prioritization. So we estimate how much effort would it go into develop this uh, feature and how much of a user value would they be doing this. So the stuff in the upper left quadrant, the ones that are easy to do, that have high value, we will get cracking on it right away. And then there are others that are a little bit, not as low hanging fruit, but we do see the value in producing it. And then, but there's a huge effort in doing that. And those are the projects that maybe take um, two or three years to complete. But um, your feedback is incredibly important. And even though I say that I'm aware of most of them, please keep giving it to us. Uh, if, if not here, then in our forum, we have a wish list. And on this wish list is a very powerful way to influence us as well, because the more people that are upvoting a certain feature, the more we know that this feature is in demand, and the more resources we will allocate to, to, to build that particular thing. All right, so make sure that you check out Navigraph's community involvement. I'm afraid that we're all out of time here. Oh. So, unfortunately, um, Mangus, I want to uh, thank you very much. Is that how you say it? Yes, thank yes. you very much. Thank you. Um, and uh, we'll be right back with you with uh, Bluebird Simulation, so stay tuned for that. Thank you. Thank you.